Okay, welcome back to IELTS Face Off. Mm -hmm. We certainly have pulled your strings when it comes to traveling, haven't we? That's okay, but before you uh, set up on your journey, how about we gear you up with some English skills uh, so you can communicate better? To do that, I have the help of my fellow country woman, uh, Lily. So let's bring in Lily Katzman. Michael, thanks for having me on the show again. Good Let's to see you as always. Check. Let's do the yes. handshake this time. Mix it out. All right. <laughs> Have a seat, Lily. Thank you. Okay, so let's get straight to business because yes. these guys want to go traveling. Sure. Now, uh, we're talking about listening. Okay. Again. Absolutely. I, I got a bunch of tips for IELTS mm. listening, but I think are we going to hear from our audience first? Yeah? All right. Cool. <laughs> yes. So we have a quiz for the audience this time. Uh, you will have five minutes to transfer your answers from the question paper to the answer paper. Okay, so do you think this statement is true or false? My answer is false because I think uh, it will take more than five minutes. What's your take on this? Yeah, exactly right. Uh, the answer is false. In fact, you do need to transfer your answers from um, your notes on the listening paper onto an answer sheet, but you actually have 10 minutes for that. So it is important when you do that, that you're really careful. Uh, you don't want to lose points, you want to throw them away uh, through lack of care in your transferring. Okay, you may be judging me for using a phone on the show, ah, no, but it's for all it. for a good reason. <laughs> is it? Uh, basically, uh, we're reaching further, as okay. that's a slogan for this year and we're reaching further to the online audiences too, not just the Ooh, audience in the I studio. Like it, yeah? So, from Huang Pu Huang. I can communicate quite well, but my uh -huh. listening is not effective enough. Mm. How do I improve my uh, listening? Sure, so I'm gonna revisit something that um, I've probably said before on this show because it's just the basic advice um, that we need to give. Number one, have a realistic expectation, developing reading and um, listening skills, um, developing the productive skills as well. It's a long game. Can't expect things to happen overnight uh, unless you're some kind of linguistic prodigy. And I've met a couple of those in my time, but for most of us humans, it's a long game. So consistent <laughs> effort over a long period of time to reach the proficiency level I need to be able to study abroad and be successful at uni or to get my dream job here in Vietnam, for example. So one, be realistic, it's a long game. It's not gonna happen for you in like two weeks or, or, or one month. Um, number two, um, for what you've mentioned specifically in this question, it's all about what we call the extensive listening or exposing yourself to loads and loads and loads and loads of things that you listen to in English, a range of accents, a range of text types as well. So again, you've got your songs on YouTube, you've got your podcasts, um, you've got movies, you've got your Netflix, we get that in Vietnam now. Mm -hmm. So basically every day commit to listening to something that's not too difficult for you. If you choose things that are too hard, it's going to tank your motivation and you're going to feel sad for yourself and you're not going to want to do it. So choose things like um, songs or simple podcasts um, if you're at a lower level and then move towards movies or sitcoms or um, the news um, if you're a higher level um, speaker there. But again, it's about consistency, about daily exposure, about variety, and about being aware it's a long game mm. um, to get excellent at a second language. Okay, thank you for your insightful tips. You're welcome. Okay, we're still reaching further to our voice of the week. So stay tuned. Welcome back to IELTS Face Off. I'm sure you're eager to meet uh, our new friend for this voice of the week. Let's take a look. Hello everyone, my name is Ding Ha. I'm 23 years old. So today this video is to tell you about my journey of learning English. When I was a second year student in the university, I decided to be a waitress in a coffee shop which attracted a lot of you know, native speakers every single day. We not only had to bring the beverage and also the food for the customer and clean their tables, but also we uh, need to have a little chat with them. 
uh, during a day we have a lot of customers which are native speakers coming to our coffee shop so I could practice my English skills every day. You know, after finishing the job at that coffee shop, I learned from our customers a lot uh, about their intonation, their pronunciation, and also how they uh, have their normal conversation. And uh, the most important thing was um, I had the motivation to learn English. So, um, you know, that's all my story uh, of learning English. really nervous right now you know I can feel my face turn red but you know this is the first time I joined the IELTS Space Out mm -hmm. so I hope that everything will be okay because you know I was one ready. Good luck. Thank you. Wow that face is a bit massive I'm sure she's pretty outside. Uh -huh. so. How about we uh, clarify that, but actually seeing her in, in real life? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's bring out our friends in the flesh. Yeah. Hi, 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 welcome. <laughs> Just as I predicted, you're a lot pretty outside. <laughs> However, I still need to send you over there uh, where you actually belong for the test. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm okay. Was one ready. Oh, wow, Ooh, excellent. I like your you attitude. Go. Let's excellent. go. Thing. Yeah. First part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. Yes. Let's talk about perfume. Mm -hmm. Is perfume something perfume. that you use every day or just for special occasions? Uh, you know, actually, I have no interest in perfumes. So, you know, for two main reasons. Uh -huh. um, the first one is that because I often enter my office until the last minute. Mm. So, you know, of course, I do not have any time to apply the perfumes. Uh -huh. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. And the main reason is that, you know, perfumes are quite expensive, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, for people who just have finished the probationary period like me, uh -huh. so we cannot afford it. Okay, so some cash flow issues around perfume there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, the next part of the speaking practice test, I'm going to give you a topic yeah. and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Okay. And um, before you talk, hi, you'll have one minute uh, to think about what you'd like to say mm -hmm. and you can make some notes if you wish. Mm -hmm. yeah? Do you mm -hmm. understand? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay, great. So you've got some paper and a pencil there in front of you and here's your topic. I'd like you to describe a singer that you like. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Could you start your presentation now, please? Okay, so I would like to tell you about the singer who mm -hmm. has a big impression on me. Uh -huh. You know, actually he's a leader in the boy band uh, coming from Korea. And you know, I do admire all the members in that group. But if I have to choose one to present to you, then I will pick the leader. Um, he is, um, his name is G Dragon, or you can call him GD. Um, yes, and you know, when I was little, when I was in primary and secondary school, you know, my family did not have any facilities to access to the internet. Mm -hmm. So the one and only way for me to entertain myself was just, you know, reading the printed newspapers. So, you know, everything had changed when um, I was on the great night. And uh, one day, m one of my besties brought the MP3 uh, player to our class and let me listen to the song performance mm. by um, that singer, G Dragon. At the time when I heard that song, you know, my feelings defined description. <sighs> yeah, you know, and I started to uh, search for more information about that group, especially the leader. And, you know, G Dragon is incredibly talented. And he often writes and compose music for his own um, self and also for his band and for the company. Mm. And you know, the best part of him is that he always stays true to himself and he will never sacrifice his own color and style to other people's opinions. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's the biggest thing I like about him and uh, whenever I get the trouble in, in my life, so I will o I o always tell, talk to myself that better days are on the way. 
Great, thank you. Thanks very much. K-pop fan. Uh, uh, can I have fan. your paper and pencil and also yeah. your touch yeah, sheet? Yeah. Thanks, Hat. Huh? Thank you. So in the final part of this practice test today, um, I'd like to ask you one or two more general questions yes. related to the topic okay. that you've just shared about. Um, do you think there are any dangers to seeking fame on the internet, maybe particularly for young people who might not be aware of some of its dangers? I think definitely yes, because you know, when uh, youngsters, they do not have enough uh, awareness about the mm. dangers um, around them, then they mm, they can you know talk about like some secrets of their family mm. or, or some personal information and maybe uh, she is beautiful or he is rich and then some you know bad boy or bad person can come to their hometown and you know do some bad things. Thanks very much, Ha. Huh? That's the end of the speaking test. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much for your informative lesson about K-pop. And we want to include you guys in the process as well. So how about you get voting now and uh, start rating our uh, K-pop star right here. As I got corrected before, she's not a K-pop star. She's a feature K-pop star. And our feature K-pop star has got 24% of the audience thought that she would get 6.5. Uh, to seven, uh, the other 47% thought they should get a 70 to 75, and the other, the rest of the audience tonight thought they should get uh, over 7.5. So, uh, let's hear it from the expert herself. Lily, what's your judgment? Hey, um, thanks Michael. So, um, wow, again, like really fantastic experience talking with you today, huh? Um, what I can say is, you were able to speak at length on all of my questions. You were able to give well-organized, well-structured answers. So you talked about G-Dragon having his own color, which I thought was beautiful, poetic language. Mm -hmm. But in English, again, we'd say he has his own style or he has his own take on things yeah. or he's his own person. So just that little natural collocation there yeah. that was sometimes missing. Although there were lots of beautiful examples as well of really natural English, like incredibly talented, stays true to himself and um, my feelings defied description. So a lot of beautiful stuff in there as mm -hmm. well as a few things that could be tweaked. Also again, and again, it's about minor tweaks here too, a couple of slips on the grammar front. Mm -hmm. um, so we say look up to a role model, not look up at. But again, a slip and your meaning was clear. Um, and again, um, performance versus performed, a little word form error yeah. there, but <laughs> so minor. Yep. Um, and then to wrap it up on the pronunciation front, again, amazingly clear pronunciation throughout. But that old chestnut that gets our Vietnamese learners every time. Um, final consonants. Um, make sure that um, your final consonants, like in shows, you got your zzz sound coming out. Uh, yeah. And also take care with some of those consonant clusters. So just to level the playing field, so hard for me to pronounce Vietnamese. Yeah. So it's so different to English. Mm -hmm. So massive hats off to you for your um, proficiency in English. Mm -hmm. But do watch out for those clusters. And the one yes. I'm thinking of is attract we've got that k and that t next to each other and it's just nasty. Um, yeah, okay. But again, um, something you might want to focus on in future. Yeah, Although overall, great so job. Much. Thanks very much, Ha. Huh? That's the end of the speaking test. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And as a token of our appreciation for K-pop, we'd like to invite you over here for some goodies, for yeah. some presents. So let's bring out the awesome gifts we've Ooh. got here. Be the miracle, oh, um, eco-friendly bag. Yes. Thank you. Great job today. <laughs> okay, and guess what? This is not the end of your journey yet, considering how much you love K-pop. You know, Australia is actually a great destination where K-pop stars actually go for tours. Mm -hmm. Well, you have the opportunity to go if you can impress our audiences from all around the country enough. So, if you love her, show her the love, you guys. fulfill her <laughs> K-pop dreams, and uh, let's check out uh, a university that she could attend, that she gets to check out when she's uh, down under in Australia.
So as many of you may not or may be aware, I'm actually based in New South Wales of Australia, which is named after a location in the UK, South Wales. And I've always wondered what it's actually like. Is it actually like New South Wales? Only one way to find out uh, through our lovely friend, Tao Tham, all the way in uh, Wales. Let's check it out. still in Cardiff and we are at University of South Wales. Welcome back to Studying UK 101 at IELTS Face Off. Today we're at this beautiful, beautiful hillside university who uh, an alumni claimed to us that he can't walk from his dorm to this library building without seeing everyone from every continent. Now all this amazing uh, Diversity is going to be revealed more on today's episode, so stay tuned for more. Hi, so welcome back after the montage of University of South Wales. And as you see, they have a very, very, very scenic little campus over the hills. And also, I know as international students, you guys have a lot of questions. So here I am with Lisa. Lisa, can Hi. you introduce yourself a bit? Absolutely. My name is uh, Dr. Lisa Davis, and I'm the Head of International mm. and Partnership Development at the University of South Wales. So, yeah. Lisa, how long have you been with the University Ooh, of South Wales? That's a good question. I guess I've been here around seven years now. Well, over the course of your seven years, I bet there has been a lot of memories. But Absolutely. Just at the top of your head, what is your absolute favourite thing about University of South Wales? Do you know, I think that for me, what makes the University of South Wales a great place to work mm -hmm. and study is the fact that we make a real difference to our students' lives. Mm -hmm. So through the way that we teach the courses, uh, our approach to teaching, mm -hmm. the way that we embed industrial experience into our program, the facilities that we give our students. It all really helps students grow and develop. I'm particularly concerned for is international students because all of my viewers in at home is from Vietnam and we're international students. So I do have a few questions on behalf of them. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I thought that you might need a bit of an expert, so I'm really uh, pleased to introduce my colleague Tom. Hi. Hi there. And uh, Tom is... Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Tom. One yeah. of the people in the university <laughs> that really does do an awful lot of work to help uh, students, specifically from Vietnam and Southeast Asia. So if there's anything you'd want to know about students from that region and mm. what they need, Tom is very much your man. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, Tom, would you like to introduce yourself briefly to the audience? Sure, absolutely. So hi, uh, I'm Tom, I'm part of the international office here at the University of South Wales. That's lovely. So before we get actually get to settle into the university, there's the application process. So could you tell me a bit about uh, how the application process goes? Sure, absolutely, yes. So um, what we really want to do is make sure that the student is supported right from the beginning, even mm -hmm. during the application process. Right. So whether the student decides to make a direct application to the university mm -hmm. or wants to use one of our partners throughout the world, mm -hmm. uh, agencies there as well to help support that application, mm -hmm. to pull together a personal statement. So we want to see mm. the intention of the student who wanting to study, what mm. their ambitions are, why mm -hmm. are they are interested in our courses and what they want to do in the future. Is there any type of uh, system that is uh, to support uh, international students? So the, the range of support that we provide mm -hmm. isn't just academic mm -hmm. or social, but financial as well. So we have right. a range of scholarships available for students. Um, International students coming from Vietnam, as an example, if they're self-funded, are entitled, entitled to a £2,500 scholarship for their yeah. undergraduate studies. Uh, and we want to make sure that that, of course, helps them to settle on into their time at the university. Mm -hmm. While they are here, well, we are contacts. We're not just there at the uh, start of things and encourage the students to make their own way. Mm -hmm. If there's anything the student needs while studying with us, from one year to three, four or five years, mm -hmm. then our office door is always open for the students as well. To know more about this wide range and all about University of South Wales, you guys need to stay in tuned and continue watching us. So, see you soon. Hi everyone, welcome to University of South Wales. So basically, we deal with aircraft maintenance, engineering, 
in the University of South Wales, as you can see behind me, there's a huge jet stream aircraft we do here. What's the difference between aircraft maintenance and the other courses are, as you can see, the aircraft, and we deal in aviation is about world class safety and the way how we maintain the aircraft and also how innovative we are. So in aviation, as you can understand, we do globally and the university does to understand about students to come in and understand what is aviation, how do we deal with all the maintenance and so on. Hi, I'm Aid Pittman, I'm one of the lecturers here. Um, the unique thing about our course is that we're very hands-on. We teach our students how to use the mind and also the hands. Uh, what is unique on our course is that students do a degree, they do a bachelor's level degree, and they also are awarded the licenses uh, that are required to work in the aircraft industry. Hello there, my name's Dan Taylor. I am the course leader for the BA Business Management degree within University of South Wales Business School. Um, we have a broad portfolio of courses covering uh, things such as biz general business management, uh, human resource management, marketing, logistics and supply chain management as well. And I think some of our key strengths of, of the business school itself are very much our ability to link theory and practice. So as students, you'll study a number of theories and frameworks and ideas and concepts in the classroom. What our strengths are is that we link them to the practic their practical application within the workplace. Um, so through certain things like our business clinic, for example, uh, we can engage directly with employers uh, and we allow students in a safe environment to test out those skills uh, that they've learned in the classroom. So that's it for University of South Wales. Now, as we do with every episode, we invite over a student, a Vietnamese student, that is uh, currently at the school and tell us about her experience. Now we have that person right here. And could you introduce yourself? Hi, so, uh, I'm Lynn, and I'm studying at University of South Wales. Hi, Lynn. So um, what major are you studying here in South Wales? Or oh, I'm studying uh, international business. Right, so I heard Lynn has uh, been joining a very interesting program. It's called the Top Up Program. Can you tell us a bit more about So my Vietnamese uh, universities, we have like collaborations with uh, the University of South Wales. Mm -hmm. So that I can like study in Vietnam three years. Then the final years I will come here mm -hmm. and finish the, the, the program. Then I can have a degree here. Oh. So it's like we have a only study here one year. Mm -hmm. So we have like more valuable degree. Wow, that's very interesting. So uh, I heard also that after this program, you're doing your master's here too? Yeah, that's just my plan. And I hope they, they will like, take my applications. And I really enjoy to study here because like, I'm used to the, the environment. Here. The weather. Yeah, the weather mm. and friends. What do you like most academically about this school? Um, as I mentioned before, I used to this school and I love mm. the people. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, when I came here uh, at the beginning, uh, I feel like a little bit boring because mm -hmm. like, I'm living in the cities mm -hmm. in, in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So when I came here, like every shop, they mm -hmm. close around 5 or 6 mm -hmm. p.m. But do you feel like that lifestyle really helps you uh, focus more on your academics? Yeah, I think I mm. think so. It's mm. really helped me a lot. So I can read more about uh, the people, the professional one. Mm -hmm. They like have experience. They have like a reality experience. So I can learn a lot of from it. So if there was one piece of advice you'd like to give our audience, uh, the ones that are hopeful to come to Wales or come to University of South Wales, what would it be? University of South Wales is the, the perfect uh, place to study mm. because as I, my, as I mentioned, the staff here, they're friendly and you can meet a lot of people here. So uh, thank you very much Lynn for today and everybody that was Lynn's take on University of South Wales and that concludes the episode of uh, 
study in UK 101. So I'll see you guys next week for another episode, and we'll see you very soon. Bye. Bye. Hmm, quite epic, but I don't just trust the video. I want to actually have some empirical experience. Uh, so let's just speak to someone who's actually studied over there to find out um, whether it's actually as cool as the video suggests. Okay, so do we have an alumnus here in the house. Uh, let's find out who he is. Okay, so first of all, uh, many people here may be wondering who you are. Could you please, uh, you know, show us some more info about who you may be? Hi, my name is yes. Tuan. I study at the University of South Wales. Mm -hmm. And uh, my course is about Master of Civil uh, Engineering and Environmental Management. Okay, so um, how did you end up in South Wales? Why did you choose it instead of London, instead of Scotland, England? Why? Uh, well, actually, when I um, apply for the, um, the course in UK, I consider a lot. Like, I want to study in London at the first. But uh, uh, when I know the information about my University of South Wales, I feel that's a better place for me to study. For example, when I study in Wales, I love the atmosphere there. My university, uh, Lyon uh, a Valley, has a lot of um, like green feel with the ship and I really like the atmosphere there. It makes me peaceful. Or the reason why I chose my University of South Wales is the tuition fee. Because uh, the living fee and the tuition fee in South Wales is uh, uh, lower than the other reason. And it's not too far away from the big towns and the big cities like London, right? So you can party anytime you want? Yeah, it only takes three hours to get a uh, bus to the London to travel or mm. something like that. Can you tell us more about the studying environment over there? When I study in Wales, I'm far away from my family and so everything I have to do by myself, yeah? And my skill of life is gaining by that way. Mm. Uh, the teacher, they're really friendly and that make me, everything all around me like that is make me confident by that way. Uh, make me more knowledge and make me love the UK and the Wales more. Thanks very much, buddy. That's really enticed me to actually check out South Wales. Now that I've actually learned about the origin of my uh, state in Australia, I feel so inspired and so pumped to travel some more. And this is exactly why you should step out there, get out of the four walls, get out of your home to uh, travel, to meet new friends, to explore new lands, because that's how you improve and increase your knowledge bank about cultures, about heritages, about you know, scenery. And, and we're going to be doing a lot more of that in the coming episodes of IELTS Face Off. So don't forget to check back in with us every Wednesday and every Saturday night. I'll see you next time. Ciao.